Hello, and what an honor to be among all of these incredibly talented award winners tonight and to have the opportunity to introduce Dean Charles Bierbauer. I think that when most of us look back at our lives, we would be satisfied knowing that we've had a successful professional career and made a difference in that field. Charles Bierbauer has not only had one successful career, but two successful careers. In his first career, Charles spent more than three decades working as a journalist, most notably as a foreign correspondent for ABC News and a political correspondent for CNN. Well, I met Charles when he started his second career at the University of South Carolina as Dean of the College of Information and Communications. In fact, he is currently the longest serving dean at the university, and that's quite a feat. But when Charles arrived in South Carolina 15 years ago, many of us didn't know what quite to make of it. How would a television news reporter be able to handle academic life? How exactly would he deal with all the cranky and sometimes downright scary tenured professors? It was clear that Charles was no longer in the newsroom. But like any good journalist, it didn't take long for Charles to fit in with his surroundings. No longer would you find him standing on the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court, but climbing the steps of William Bryce Stadium to watch Gamecock football. Instead of shaking hands with U.S. presidents and Supreme Court justices, he was now high-fiving cocky <laughs> and traveling across rural South Carolina on Cocky's Reading Express promoting literacy. And yes, he's still dressed like a television news correspondent, always wearing the coat and tie, always in a suit. But as Charles began to bleed garnet and black, you could many times find him wearing garnet and black. He also immersed himself in the bizarre world of South Carolina politics, moderating debates and hosting his own political show on South Carolina ETV. Even though I don't ever think I've heard him utter the word y'all, I can tell you that Charles Bierbauer has embraced the culture and made lasting contributions to his adopted state of South Carolina. I think I've lost count of the number of people who've told me when they first meet Dean Bierbauer that he really, really intimidates them. I mean, it's pretty obvious that someone must be super smart if he speaks Russian and German, really. But if you're lucky enough to get to know him better, you'll find that Charles has capitalized on the many qualities that makes him a good journalist. And, he's, he, and he uses them in a way that has allowed him to develop into a great leader, mentor, and teacher. He's a good listener. He doesn't make snap judgments. He searches for truth before making a decision. He's also fair, observant, thick-skinned, and hardworking. And you can't forget his good sense of humor. But perhaps most importantly, He's compassionate about the people he works with and who work for him. And he puts their needs and the needs of the organization before his own needs. Charles likes to say that he learns with and learns from the people that he works with. But I think I speak for all of us in the college when I say that it has been an honor for us to learn from you. Now it is my pleasure to share with you some highlights from Dean Charles Bierbauer's distinguished career. There Ronald Reagan, never strong on reporters' names, called CNN's White House correspondent the man with the beard. Officials at the Afghan embassy here in Moscow said they As ABC's Moscow correspondent, he was often the man in the furry hat. It was cold in Moscow, and it was a great hat. Around the USC campus, he's known as the Dean. 
serving in his 15th year as Dean of the College of Information and Communications. Charles Bierbauer describes himself as a journalist by inclination, training, and profession. By the time he arrived in Columbia in 2002, he'd accrued a more than 35-year career as a journalist, print, wire service, online, and especially television and radio. Radio was a first love, a storyteller's medium. In the dean's office, I keep a collection of old radios. My first radio assignment was in an unexpected place, a U.S. Army base in Sinop, Turkey. A bunch of us built our own radio station, and I was the news director and the host of a midnight jazz show. Back in college, I became the weekend newsman at WKAP in Allentown, Pennsylvania. With degrees in journalism and Russian in hand from Penn State, he headed back overseas. Between the late 60s and early 80s, Bierbauer covered the Cold War from bases in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, Vienna, Austria, Bonn, West Germany, twice, London, and Moscow. After a stint with Westinghouse Group W's Philadelphia station KYW, ABC sought him out as its Moscow bureau chief. While it's traditional to have a testimonial or two, a kind word here, let me offer one instead. I've been fortunate to work with incredible broadcasters throughout my career. At ABC, the late Peter Jennings and Frank Reynolds. Uh, in the Bond Bureau, a phenomenal and funny German-Japanese camera team, Tony Hiroshiki and Teddy John. My Moscow crew, Nikolai, Alexei, Zoya, and Vasily. And at CNN, scores of people who put the network on the air and made it something incredible. These are the people that you learn with and you learn from, and though they are distant in time and space, they're very close in memory. From a second assignment in Germany, Bierbauer joined the less than year old CNN in 1981. The CNN gig lasted more than 20 years. Nine of those were covering the Reagan and Bush administrations. In his last five years with CNN, he reported from the U.S. Supreme Court, an assignment he considered his most intellectually challenging. Uh, the, the bottom line of this ruling, which came to us around 10 o'clock this evening, was that the judgment of the Supreme Court of Florida is reversed, I'm reading, and the case is remanded for further proceedings proceedings not inconsistent with this opinion. After that, it gets complex. Bierbauer met his wife, AP correspondent Suzanne Schaefer, when both were stationed in Germany. In 2001, Bierbauer had just left CNN, and Schaefer was covering the Pentagon for the AP. 9-11 was a turning point in their lives and in the nation's. In the ensuing year, Bierbauer consulted on the CBS Supreme Court drama First Monday and had a recurring role as himself. On the case of the United States versus Danny Lowell, our guests are Larry Flint, First Amendment advocate, and Bill O'Reilly, host of The O'Reilly Factor. But he Mr. was on a path to Columbia Everybody. and to USC, CNN, not Hollywood. In South Carolina, Bierbauer has remained a broadcast fixture, frequently interviewed for his journalistic and political expertise on many of your stations. And since 2002, he's been a key part of SCETV's political and election coverage. But what he is really proud of is USC's new journalism school building, opened in 2015. I see faces among you who can count the decades. One or two, perhaps, who said, I'll believe it when I see it. See. Believe. I know some of our students are seniors who are glad that they will not have... On behalf of the SCBA, it's my distinct honor to present the SCBA 2017 Honorary Lifetime Membership Award to Charles Bierbauer. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing this evening and this moment, a brief one in a long career, as we've heard of others who have invested significant parts of their lives in broadcasting in one way or another. I realize I'm, I'm the last thing between you and the 11 o'clock news, <laughs> maybe the 10 o'clock. I do want to thank Andrea. She's a fabulous colleague. Thank you for those kind remarks.
Thank you, South Carolina Broadcasters Association. I'm going to say thank you a lot, but don't worry about it. Thank you, Rich and Margaret, and to the many friends and colleagues that I have gained in our 15 years in South Carolina. I greatly appreciate, as well, SCBA's extreme generosity to the School of Journalism and Mass Communications, particularly all the scholarships that you've provided for our students. Thanks to all of your news directors, assignment editors, reporters, and my friends at SCETV as well for keeping me on television. We debuted a new public affairs show called This Week in South Carolina last Friday with an interview with, with Governor Haley. We'll be back on Fridays at 7.30. Thanks to Brett Williams, who narrated and edited the video. Brett is a senior, Brett is right here. He's a senior broadcast major, an honors college student. He wants to be a sportscaster. Would you hire him, please? <laughs> All of us know that what we do is a complex team effort. I couldn't have edited that video. I worked in union shops. I didn't touch things. <laughs> but. Everywhere I've worked, I've benefited from the exceptional colleagues, and I really wanted this to be about all of us, not about me. There are a couple of footnotes that I should add to the bio. One is a confession. When I graduated from Penn State, I was told I had completed enough credits to get my degree in broadcasting, which was in the speech department, or in journalism. I demurred. I would caught the radio bug, but what I really wanted was the degree in journalism. I will, as Brett narrated, always consider myself a journalist by training, inclination, and profession. The Russian hat is Red Fox. I still have it. I did not bring it because I knew people would want pictures of it. But in Moscow, if you did not wear a hat in the wintertime, the little babushkas would come up to you and say, Maladoy Chulabiak no Sietiev Shapku. Young man, put on a hat. I tell students to acquire some skill or experience that separates them from the pack. In my case, it was the degree in Russian, thanks to Penn State and Uncle Sam. When ABC sent me to Moscow, I was asked, You speak Russian, don't you? And I could answer, Konyeshna, of course. And when I questioned Mikhail Gorbachev in Russian, George Bush took note. It might not hurt to be studying Russian again if we're in for a... <laughs> if we're in for a Trump-Putin bromance, it might be handy. We are, without a doubt, in a challenging time for all journalists and all of journalism, regardless of where it's practiced. It's not just President Trump's disdain for the press. President Obama was not always warm to the media. And every president, in my experience, has sought to limit the media. We also have to contend with fake news, whether it's to undermine American democracy or to mine the media simply for profit. And we're confronted by the sheer abundance of social media with its potential for distortion. That's a job for all of us to address. Tweet this, please. I want to especially thank one journalist who is here tonight and has been at my side since we met in Germany back in 1980. She will tell you that at the time, well, Throughout her career, she was a print reporter with the AP. And she was then, as she has told me, wary of TV reporters. My wife, Suzanne Schaefer, is here. And I, I see she's apparently recording this. <laughs> Suzanne has just retired after a 40-year career with the AP. The children and grandchildren are not here this evening, but I must thank them for their tolerance in being carted around the world. None have gone into journalism. 
I'd like to thank my colleague Elizabeth Quackenbush for nominating me for this honor. And let me close by thanking my many colleagues in the broadcasting faculty at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications, some of whom were able to join us this evening. Dr. Andrea Tanner, director of the school. Uh, Dr. Lars Smith is here, Dr. Kevin Hall. Dr. Lee Moskowitz is, is with us as well. Uh, others in the broadcasting sequence, many of whom you know, Rick Peterson and Harvey Knocklinger are the senior instructors in our Capstone Carolina News broadcast program. Dr. Miles Romney, Dr. Augie Grant, Randy Covington. These are the most important people in and out of this room. They are training your future reporters, producers, anchors, directors, multimedia journalists. Many of you have those graduates in your newsrooms now. Some of them are here. I hope you will keep hiring them. Thank you for this honor, which I like to think you have bestowed on all of us who believe in our mission of training the best journalists we can. Thank you.